Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store, and this week we're going to take a look at baritone ukuleles once again. The baritone ukulele is cool, it's different, it's deeper, it's richer, it's soulful, and the baritone uke is unique because the other sizes, sopranos, concerts, and tenors, you can trace them back to Hawaii and even before that, different instruments in Portugal. But the baritone ukulele's history is fairly modern by comparison. It was developed in the 1950s. Actually, two people at the same time developed the baritone ukulele in different parts of the East Coast of America, East Coast-ish. So we're talking kind of Boston and New York. And what happened with the baritone is Banjo players were attracted to it because it was a four string instrument that was portable. Guitar players or people that wanted to learn guitar were attracted to it because it was basically a smaller version of the guitar that was easier to play. It was accessible. And the modern baritone is quite different to the other ukulele sizes as a result, not just in tuning, but in what people tend to want out of them. So today we're gonna to take a look at 10 baritones, very different prices. We're gonna look at something that's all laminate to begin with. And by the end, we're gonna be looking at these aspirational dream ukes that you think, yeah, all right, I don't need a kidney, you know, that kind of ukulele. So we're gonna look at that and everything in between. Let's begin. The first you can look at today is the Ohana BK10, which for me is the ukulele that most closely resembles the original baritone ukuleles made by Favilla and Vega in the 1950s and 60s. It's a laminate mahogany, so it's not all solid wood, but there's something good about laminate baritones. They tend to have a stiffness to them that I know actually several customers that prefer a more affordable laminate baritone to something all solid wood. So keep that in mind when you hear the sound sample later on. Laminate mahogany on the front, back and sides. Ohanas have a slightly smaller scale length, just a, an inch smaller than the average baritone. And they feel very, yeah, they feel just like giant tenors, not super tenors, let's call it a giant tenor, make a new size. You don't have much decoration on the BK10 because it's based on a style one, but you do have a tiny sound hole rosette, a rosewood fingerboard and bridge with open gear tuners on the back. And yeah, there's not much else to say about it. It's a good ukulele. I highly recommend it if you want to dip your toe in the world of baritone uke. Let's give the BK10 a play and see what you think. Second up today, we're going to take a look at the UMA UBU20S. This is a solid spruce top ukulele with laminate mahogany back and sides. Comes with quite a nice gig bag, rosewood fingerboard and bridge with closed gear UMA tuners. Hopefully I can get that to focus for you. One thing I noticed straight away about this after holding the Ohana is that the neck and the nut width on this are noticeably wider. The Ohana feels traditional, a bit more compact because early baritone ukuleles actually more resembled a tenor guitar where they have a slimmer taper going up the neck. The Uma is much more Hawaiian. It's wider, it's thicker. It's expecting you to have big hands and want a wider string spacing. It's another satin finish ukulele and it's loud, it's punchy, it's got more of a guitar-like sound to it. So if you're somebody playing in a ukulele group that needs to fill out the low end frequencies but you want to be heard, then this is a fantastic option. Let's give the UBU20S play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to take a look at the Ohana BK35G. This is an all solid mahogany version of the uke we looked at earlier in the video. So all solid woods, a bit more fancy as you look around. So it has front and back binding. They're plastic bindings with 
kind of a black, white and black three tier to them. You have the sound hole rosette as well, which is a white plastic rosette, more traditional looking, but it has a high gloss finish, which gives it more attack, more kind of instant uh, brightness than a satin finish ukulele tends to have. Mahogany itself is quite a dark wood when you compare it to some others. So baritone ukuleles made of mahogany can be quite, um, quite boomy but the gloss takes away some of that so you're getting the darker frequencies but with more kind of instant you know thwack to the notes uh, this particular one has a walnut fingerboard and a rosewood bridge because ohana don't always know what they're going to do with the fingerboard and bridge and you have the same open gear tuners here made by grover with really nice i can't remember what you call these i feel like you call them kind of kidney beam buttons they've got a real nice shape to them and a slightly more narrow nut and the slightly smaller scale length again. When I say it's small, please don't think I'm talking about it being more like a tenor. I'm talking about kind of fractions of inches, but they can change the tension of the strings. So Ohana's can feel a bit slinkier, you know, not quite as high tension as some of the more modern Hawaiian style baritones. Anyway, I digress. Let's give the BK35G a play and see what you think. Next up today, we're going to take a look at the Pono AB. Pono don't get as much credit as they deserve because about eight to ten years ago, when the baritone ukulele began to increase in popularity, Pono were the only company producing a an affordable, a playable, high-end feeling ukulele. And although the only criticism I have of Pono is that they can sometimes look quite boring, you know, they don't stand out on a wall but they are players' instruments. You know, you play them, you love them, you enjoy them. And I think the trick and the secret to them is the truss rod in the neck. Very few ukuleles before Pono came along were having truss rods in the neck on baritones. So instead, the way they would counteract that is by making the neck thicker and making it just feel a bit more rustic. When the Pono came along with the truss rod in the neck, it was one of the first, probably the first mass manufactured baritone with a slimmer nut, so a 35 mil nut width, ebony fingerboard and bridge, all solid acacia body, very plain acacia, but there's nothing wrong with that because that's part of what makes this instrument so affordable. You have Grover tuners, and as I believe I mentioned before, but just in case I didn't, a 35 mil nut width. The Pono AB is like the industry standard for a, a gigable, nice baritone. And everyone else is kind of trying to be above or below Pono. Um, I think it still, even now in 2022 as I film this, it fills a really unique price point where only really flight are attempting to introduce baritones at the same price. Let's give the Pono AB a play and see what you think.
Next up today, we're going to take a look at two ukuleles. We're going to take a look at the flight baritone instruments. Flight make a laminate mahogany baritone. We don't actually stock that at Southern Ukulele Store. The ones of them I played in the past, you know, they were okay, but I felt like we already had things like the Ohanas that fit that bill perfectly. And in recent months, Flight have really excelled themselves and come out with probably one of the best baritones under a thousand pound that we sell. Uh, I'm going to talk first about the Carabo, but I could just as easily be talking about the Aurora. Both these ukuleles look on the face of it very, very similar. They both have spruce tops, but they have very different back and sides. The Carabo in this hand has mango back and sides and the Aurora has rosewood back and sides. Let's talk about the Carabo first. It's a big body. This is more like a baby guitar body. It's wider, it's a tenor shape, but elongated. So if you imagine the baritone is normally long and slender, like a giant concert ukulele. What Flight have done with their baritone shape is make basically a giant tenor shape ukulele. The lower bout, the elongation of the lower bout, I think gives it more bass. You hear more of the lower notes on the Flight ukuleles, regardless of what strings you use and how you play and the bigger body lends itself to people who want something a bit chunkier in their hands. <laughs> uh, God, I hope no one ever cuts up my videos and uses them for memes because honestly there's some real quotes in there like that. You've got solid mango back and sides with front black binding, ebony fingerboard and bridge. And you've got these inlays going up the fingerboard here, a satin neck with a gloss body and then a slotted headstock on the Carabo. The Aurora does not have the slotted headstock, but we'll talk about that in a second. You have a 38 mil nut width with a very wide 30 mil string spacing, and the whole thing just feels big and tight. It's, it's very guitar-like in nature. That's the Carabo. The Aurora has a few differences to it. It's slightly cheaper. The Aurora has laminate back and sides. So this is laminate rosewood back and sides. Very distinctly a rosewood fingerboard and bridge, and the bridge on the Aurora is a string through bridge. It's not the pin bridge that you get on the Carabo. You have a paddle style headstock with um, Pro, Pro L tuners on the Prowl, I want to call it, tuners on the back, which are gold with black cogs. They actually look really smart. You still have a 38 mil nut width with a wider string spacing, but the unique feature, the reason that I think most people would go for the Aurora is because it has a pickup fitted inside that sound hole is a volume and tone control. So if you want something with a pickup fitted under 400 pound, that cancels the Carabo out, but does introduce this uke. You'll notice finally as well, it has a scoop cutaway for upper fret access. I personally don't know that many people that can play the upper frets of the ukulele and really pull it off. But if you're one of those players, then more power to you. This is a good instrument for that kind of thing. Let's give the Carabo and then the Aurora a play, compare them and see what you think. Next up today, I'd like to reintroduce you to Ana Ole. Ana Ole is the product of Luthia Gareth Yaki, based in Pearl City, Hawaii. These are made in Hawaii by Gareth and his apprentice. And they are, I think, one of the real kind of 
sleeper ukuleles people don't know exists that are truly you know high quality good woods made in the kind of place that people dream that their high-end uke will be made of a lot of the time just well-made instrument so all solid hawaiian color on the front back and sides really nice color as well with a lot of what canalea called drama you have a very big sound hole a guitar type sound hole which We've debated in previous videos that you can go back and watch how the sound hole affects the sound. I just like how it sounds. It's got a kind of openness to it. It's louder than a Koa ukulele tends to be. It's still got that harp-like frequency to it, but it's, it's truly unique. You have a slightly wider nut width on this once again with a very slim neck. So a much slimmer neck depth than on the flights we've just looked at. It's a high gloss finish, a very rustic gloss, I must warn you, these are cosmetically, they're never 100% perfect. They are workshop ukuleles and you know when you look at them up close, they look like workshop ukuleles. Nothing wrong with that and it's reflected in the price. You know, these run for approximately half the price of you know, a Canalea that we're gonna look at later on and a lot of that is down to the amount of time spent on the finish. Let's give the Ana Ole AT Koa, AB Koa a play and see what you think. Next up today we're going to take a look at the Canalea Monaco Baritone. They don't actually make these for us anymore. It's not something that Canalea can produce because they struggle to find the right kind of mango. Mango wood is a wood that I love and on baritones I think it comes out really well because it's deep. It's kind of got a saltiness to it, you know, it's got a flavour, a personality that a lot of woods don't have. Uh, hopefully you'll hear that in the sound sample later on. But also looks wise, it has a map-like, almost kind of a papyrus sketching look to it as you look around the body, which I think is equally as beautiful as a really nice piece of color. You have a UV gloss finish on this instrument with a, a mango armrest kind of hidden into the body so that you get maximum comfort on the body. Ebony fingerboard and bridge with ebony bridge pins. Canalea's Cobra headstock with mango K logo inlaid in. This one's particularly dark. Goto Stealth tuners. And you get very special side mounted mango inlays and you can't pick it up here, but it's so subtle. You get a red epoxy Monaco inlay across the fingerboard. I love these. I wish that we could have kept making them forever, but they were made in extremely limited numbers. This is currently on the website at the time of filming. There's a link in the description. It is a pre-owned model, um, condition-wise very good. Uh, but hear it for yourself. Once again, this is the Canalea Monaco Baritone.
Our penultimate ukulele today is a Kanalea KPAB. This particular one is Select Hawaiian Koa, so it's actually not one of the master grade or premium grade Koa ukuleles, but I think it's one of the nicest looking ukes in the shop right now. Really wavy Koa grain, especially the back. It's got, I want to say, an almost watercolor painting vibe to it. The wood grain is really unique very holographic as well as I can I can actually see it coming through on the camera as I turn this instrument around and the KPAB is fairly kind of low spec in terms of cosmetic details but the bits they do do really stand out first of all you have this really thick abalone rosette abalone against koa is you know it's just royal isn't it it looks like you know fit for a king the front binding is tortoise shell so it's almost purple in color very very subtle from a distance but up close it's just this really nice array of colors the color palette when you look down at the ukulele is gorgeous ebony fingerboard and bridge with abalone dots going up the fingerboard all the way to a k brand abalone headstock inlay finally you have gold open gear tuners with black buttons the can layers have a 38 mil nut width slightly longer baritone scale with ebony fingerboard and bridge Wow, we were. Let's give the KPAB a play and see what you think. The final ukulele we're going to look at today is a Deluxe Deluxe, a ukulele by Kamaka that is deluxe with deluxe features. This is the HF4DS. So this ukulele is a deluxe Kamaka with a custom spruce top. You don't see too many of these. We get maybe two every three years here at Southern Ukulele Store. They have a spruce top with Hawaiian koa back and sides. Look at the koa that Kamaka used. They just they just know what they're doing, don't they? It's almost as if they've been doing it a hundred years. High gloss finish. It's one of the few ukes actually, the only uke in the video today with a high gloss neck as well. A wide nut width with a very slender neck depth. This is very unique feeling. It's, it's wide and open and it feels more like a classical guitar than the other ukuleles in the video. Kumaka's famous headstock with the two Ks on the Oh, look at that actually you can see the detail there really nice color faceplate on this ukulele german made shallow tuners with snakewood buttons and then the thing that makes this a deluxe model is the rope binding this has traditional kind of period correct rope binding on the top and the rosette looks really nice against the spruce top actually makes me appreciate just how nice Miller ukuleles look. Miller ukuleles are directly inspired by this ukulele and uh, it just looks great. Final detail, the bridge of a Kamaka baritone is much more classical, classical guitar like than everything else in the video today. It's interesting to see where they drew inspiration from because of course you know the Hawaiians didn't invent the baritone ukulele so when they began to make them Kamaka would have been probably the first Hawaiian brand to, to start building them. And it feels when you look at this compared to everything else in the video, like their inspiration was drawn more closely from classical guitar than from tenor guitar. Anyway, sometimes I bore myself with these videos. I hope you're still watching. This is the HF4DS. Let's give it a play. See what you think.
Thanks so much for watching folks. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, you can find the links for the ukuleles in the description. Uh, the descriptions are always really in depth, so they'll probably answer most of your questions. But if you have any more, you can leave a comment or you can call the shop on 01202 430820 or email me or the team at alex at ukulele.co.uk. I'll be back very, very soon. I've got a really cool soprano video lined up for you next week. But this week, we're all about baritones, all about DGBE, and I really hope that you've had a great time with me. Thanks for watching.